Hi everyone, welcome to another MSI Insider stream. Uh, today we're going to do something really cool. We've got this nice case from Inwin, it's called the Inwin A1. And we're going to build a B450 mini ITX uh, system for gaming and streaming. Uh, to do that we got this very nice B450i uh, Gaming Plus uh, AC motherboard. AC stands for the wireless connectivity because it has uh, Wi-Fi on it as well. Uh, we're going to combine this with this processor, the AMD Ryzen 2600. Uh, it's a 6-core processor with uh, simultaneous multi-threading. So it's also very suitable for, uh, for multiple workloads uh, at the same time. Uh, so you don't need a separate streaming PC with this one. You can just stream and game all at once. Uh, I'll give you a, a quick walkthrough with the motherboard. If you can see here, got a close-up cam. Uh, as you can see, it's a very small motherboard, so everything is really crowded in here. Uh, you have two DDR4 slots right here. Um, you have the, the AM4 socket, of course, which is suitable for both the first and second generation AMD Ryzen processors. Uh, here you got one PCI Express x 16 slot. And of course today, because we're building a PC for both streaming and gaming, we're also going to uh, take a beefy graphics card in there. Here you have the I.O. of the motherboard. You can see the wireless AC connectivity, but today we're going to go with the gigabit wired connection. You got plenty of uh, other connectivity for audio, USB. In case you want to use uh, the uh, internal graphics in the processor, you also have DisplayPort and HDMI on there. And what's very special about uh, ATX motherboards is they're very complex. Uh, the, the power uh, delivery on there, there is just a little bit of, of space for it. So uh, what we did here is usually you have two chips for each power phase. On this one, they're integrated in one chip. So we managed to get six power phases on this small motherboard. So you can even run a pretty high-end processor with it. You could, for example, take a Ryzen 7 as well, or even overclock a Ryzen 5 or 7 on it. Um, Further on, uh, I already mentioned the graphics card. We will use the, the Mac 2 and then the Radeon RX 580 graphics card. It combines really well with the Ryzen processor. It's also a high tier product. Um, I'll give you a short walkthrough with the case now. The Inwin A1, it's a really nice case. It's just released quite recently. Um, as you can see, it's really small. I'll just pick it up for a second. It's a really small case. On the bottom, you have RGB lighting, which is really cool. You can also synchronize it with uh, with your motherboard and other components. Here's the back of the case. As you can see, you don't see any power supply here. It's all the way in the front of the case, right there. It's already integrated there. It's a 600 watts 80 plus bronze uh, power supply that comes with the case. And there is an internal cable that goes all the way to the back. So here you power it and it goes to the power supply. We'll open it up for you on the side. Got a nice clicking mechanism, so no screws here, very easy. If you open it up, the internals of the case. Maybe we can show from above so you can see right in there. As I told you, here is the integrated power supply. Um, what's also very special about this case is that on top here, it has a QI charger. So if your phone supports QI charging, you can just put it on top of the case and it's already connected to the power supply. So there's nothing you have to do for that. Um, now we'll build the system, of course. I will grab all the components with me. The processor. Right here, I've got some memory and an SSD. The memory we've got today is Kingston HyperX memory. It's two times uh, eight gigabytes, DDR4. And our SSD, it's a Samsung 950 Pro, 260 gigabytes, but of course you can also take a higher capacity. In the case, uh, behind the motherboard tray, you have space for two uh, 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD. So if you want, you can put plenty of storage in a small case. However, there's no space for a three and a half inch. So regular hard disk won't fit in this case. Very important to, uh, to notice. 
then let's first install the CPU and the memory on the motherboard, of course. For this system, we will use the integrated cooling. Uh, if you want to use another cooling method, it is possible, but really take care which cooling you take, because the case is it's rather small, and not all CPU coolers will fit in here. Let me see if I... I still need my thermal grease. Let me see where I put that. Ah, there it is. What a miracle. Thermal grease, very important. Otherwise your CPU will die within minutes. Here we have the CPU. I will show it close by. There it is, the Ryzen 5 2600, six core CPU, 12 threads. So really suitable for the gaming and streaming. I'll put this in front so I can show you the installation. Before we will install the processor, we have to do something else because the bracket on this motherboard um, is only used for certain uh, processor coolers, but this one has got screws right here. So we're going to take these two plastic caps, we're going to take them off, otherwise the cooling won't fit. And in those screw holes we will attach the, the AMD cooler. They come off really easily. You don't need these with this cooler. But if you use another cooler, you might need to use them. So don't already take them off the motherboard. You might still need them. Okay, they're off. We're on the back of the motherboard. There is a back plate. Now it comes off right away. Um, we do need this because this will uh, attach the cooler to the motherboard. The motherboard will fit nice in between. Also something to notice, if you use this cooler, you have uh, a plastic cap over the cooler. This one, you need to put it on the left side from my side. So over the heatsink, because if you put it on the other side, it will go over your memory slots and your memory modules won't fit in there. Let me grab the processor. For the processor, there's only one way to put it in the CPU socket. If you watch in the corner, at one point there is a pin missing compared to the other corners. And you need to line that one out with that specific corner in the CPU socket. So it will seem like it's twisted 90 degrees, but this is the only way it will fit in the motherboard. And then you can just click it in and nice and tidy. Then we will apply the thermal grease, which is very important. If you don't use any thermal grease, your processor will probably overheat. Um, sometimes there is already thermal grease on your CPU cooler. You can use that. I'm just using some separate thermal grease today. We just don't use too much, but not too little either. Something like this. I don't know if you can see it. You don't need to spread it because we will just put the cooler on there. And once we screw it, it will get tighter and it will spread the thermal grease automatically. So no need to worry about that. So let's attach it. If you have any questions in between, just drop them in chat and I'll try to answer as many as possible. Adish asks, can you tell about the processor? What do you want to know about the processor? It's a six core. It got 12 threads because of simultaneous multi-threading. Makes it really suitable for both gaming and streaming at the same time. Go. 
tight but not too tight. And also, very important, connect the fan connector to the motherboard, which is right there. There is a reason why we installed the CPU already beforehand. In many ITX cases, it's very complicated to uh, do that afterwards. If the uh, motherboard is already in the case, it's so hard to reach it. You don't have any space for your hands. Also make sure to take off your, your watch or something, because it's really hard to reach certain places which you will obviously see later as well. So we're also going to install the memory beforehand. It will make our lives a lot easier in the end. So as I told you, this motherboard only has two memory slots because of the size. So make sure you buy dual channel memory and not a kit with four memory slots. There we go. So there's already the base of the system. Then another very important thing, because there is no space on the front and we're going to use an M.2 SSD, we need to place it on the back because this is where the M.2 connector is. Uh, once it's installed, in some cases you can reach it on the back, but it's often very complicated and in some you cannot reach it at all. So we're already going to install it right now on the back right here you can see the m.2 connector and it will just go underneath the the bracket for the, the cpu cooler let me take my smaller screwdriver just one screw and you put it in like this and just put the screw back in there that's all you need to do this is already a pre-installed SSD, so I already put Windows and Rocket League on there, so we don't have to go through the whole installation process. We can just get going right away. Um, as for the case fan, we have a nice Polaris case fan. It's also from Inwin. It's an RGB fan, but we're not going to install it right away, because as soon as you put this in the case, you cannot reach the place for the motherboard anymore. So make sure to do that afterwards. And I'll also unpack the graphics card so everything is ready for installation. Even though it's a very small case, as you can see from above, we have a lot of space for the graphics card. So we're going to take a really beefy graphics card with two fans in there. There is the MSI uh, Radeon RX 580 Mac 2 with 8 gigs of, of uh, video memory. So it's a really big graphics card. It's actually a lot bigger than the motherboard. Let me show you. So the graphics card is really a lot bigger. But we have a lot more space for the graphics card than for the motherboard. So it's no problem at all. Then we'll grab the IO shield. We'll place it in the back of the case. Let me put this there. It's right here. Yes, George, this, this uh, GPU is the RX 580. Maybe we can get a nice spec slide so we can see what's in there. We have a nice overview. There it is. So these are all the components that we're using for today's system. So now we can place the motherboard into the case from the top. And this is really tight because the power supply is right next to it. So we might need to drag away some cables to reach everything. And 
and there we are. It's a really tight fit, but it fits. So let me take the screws, we can screw it right in there. So many ITX motherboards, they only need four screws. One in every corner. I'm gonna read chat real quick. <laughs> Peter looks so different after he is shaved. Yeah, it's much better, isn't it? There we go. Also, something to keep in mind, when screwing in the motherboard, make sure you don't drop any screws because it will be hard to find them back. And there we are. Now we have to connect everything inside. For the power supply, we have two connectors to the motherboard. One is the 24 pins ATX, which is on the side of the motherboard. And the other one, let me see, is right here. It's the eight pin one for the CPU, as you can see right here. That will go all the way right there in the corner. So around the CPU cooler. And also make sure it doesn't hit the fan inside. Here the 24 pin ATX is all the way right next to the memory. But maybe because we need to be there as well, it's better to first connect to USB 3.0. Because once I put this in there, I cannot reach it anymore. As well as one of the fan connectors. Let me just take the other panel off to see where it is. There we go. I'll also take the detailed cam here so you can see inside the case. Here in the front, if you want, you can install a 120 millimeter fan as well as in the back. But for today's build, we already installed two 120 millimeter fans in the bottom of the case. So we have an upwards airflow to the graphics card and the outtake around the CPU. So let's see, first we need the USB connector and here's the fan connector as well. The good thing about these fans is that you can actually daisy chain them. So you got one fan is connected to the other, is connected to the other. So you only need to connect it at one point and it will drive all three fans. It's a really cool system. And you also just need one RGB header to synchronize the lighting with the motherboard. So you don't need to connect each fan separately to the motherboard. It's really hard to reach here. If you have big hands, mini ITX is very hard to put together. There we are, that was the fan connector. Okay, front USB connector right here. And then the ADX connector, the 24 pin. Right there. Then of course we need to, uh, for the power switch, we need a connector as well. And for the power LED and for the hard drive LED. And there in the bottom left corner of the motherboard, it will say JFP1. And there, make sure to read the manual, what goes where. I already read it before, so I'll just put them right where they have to be. So here we have the power button right there then we have the power LED 
right next to it in an impossible position. There we go. And the hard drive LED. Which is actually more an SSD LED nowadays because most people will have an SSD as their primary storage. There we are. Then we're going to install the 120 millimeter fan. Here it is. It goes in the back of the case right here. Make sure to have this housing on the back side because then it will drag the air outside of the case. Otherwise it will blow into the case, but the other ones already do that. the screws as you can see in the detailed cam just fits nicely in the back just align it there and you can put in the screws these fans also have small rubbers to make sure you don't have any sound from vibrations and stuff so it will make your computer more silent because of that Question from Spoof Pass. Hi Mike, would an RX 560 Aero ITX suffice for a mini, uh, mini IDX uh, Ryzen rig? It depends a bit on what you want to do on it. If you play light games, then it would be sufficient. But if you want to play the bigger titles on higher resolutions, I'd make sure to get a bit heavier graphics card than RX 560. But for example, if you play esports titles like Counter Strike or Rocket League, which we'll play later on. Those will also run very well on Full HD on an RX 560. Then, in the corner of the fan, we will have two connectors. One is to uh, connect the fan to the motherboard, so it will get power from there. And the other one is the daisy chaining with the fans in the bottom. So that we only need one connection for all three of the fans. And to make sure the RGB lighting is in sync with the other components, like for example the graphics card, and later on also the mouse and the keyboard, we also have the RGB header. And we have two of them because in the bottom of this case there is, uh, there's also an RGB strip. So we'll connect both RGB headers in the lower right corner. So everything will be nice and sync. There we go. Then we have one more connector, which is the audio connector for the front of the case. Well, front, it's actually on top. As you can see right here, you got the two USB connectors and two audio connectors for the headset. And that goes all the way in the bottom left corner. There we go. So now we have the motherboard installed, everything's attached. So now the only thing we have to do is put in the graphics card. So on this side of the motherboard, we have to take off the two brackets. So it will fit right in there. Take this cable aside because this is the power connector for 
the GPU. You can actually put very heavy graphics cards in there because you have two 8-pin power connectors. So we just put them aside. And make sure all the cables are pushed to the side so it will fit nicely in there. by one of the cables there. Let me take that to the side. So now there's many cables here. We have the front connectors, the audio and the fan connectors. They're all right there. There we go. People are asking, what chat am I reading? I'm reading both, Twitch, YouTube, but also Facebook. So just put them in there and I'll try to answer as many as possible. So the graphics card is attached. As you can see, you even have plenty of space left in the front. So you can put really long graphics cards in there. So even graphics cards that are longer than this RX 580, you can still fit them in there. Then we will connect the 8-pin power connector. And this graphics card has a single 8-pin power connector, so we can just put the other aside because we won't need it for this and then we're actually done so we can put everything back together and see if it runs On the back you got the thumb screws and on the front you just have buttons you push in there. There we go. So let me show it in front of the camera. Here it is. And I already got some cables here to hook it up to this monitor, keyboard, mouse. And I also have a very nice game controller, which we will use to play some Rocket League. There we go. I'll just clean up real quick. Get this baby going. Uh, I am Box. You said you had a question on Facebook. I haven't noticed it. Can you repeat it, maybe? 
Dark Knight is asking FreeSync. Yes, we are using a monitor that supports FreeSync and the graphics card is an RX, fi RX uh, 580 AMD Radeon, so it also supports FreeSync. So for now, we will just take the standard BIOS settings and boot right into Windows. Because I'm using the Force GC30 uh, today, uh, it's also possible to use it wirelessly. So I got this nice USB dongle. I'll just put it on top in there. As you can see now, the lights are all white bluish. But of course you can choose any color you like because the graphics cards, the fans, the case, they all support RGB lighting and you can synchronize them with the motherboard. So there we are in Windows. As you can see the lighting already switches to red. I think that was already preset in MSI Mystic Light where you can adjust all the settings. You can also synchronize your keyboard for example and your mouse. But today we're going to play some Rocket League, so I'll take the game controller for that. Asking about the thickness of the motherboard. How do you mean the thickness of the motherboard? Like the amount of layers for the PCB? I'm not sure about that one. I would have to check that with the technical department, how many layers they use for a PCB. But usually ITX motherboards, they use more layers because they're more complex, because everything is on such tight space. Oh, I'm getting questions. Get the Mystic Light app to sync up all RGB. I'll just open it up. It's now all set to red because it's a really nice match with the accents on the motherboard and the graphics cards. Or a graphics card in this situation, it's only one. Uh, but here in Mystic Light, as you can, can you already see my screen, here's the Mystic Light app. You can just select all components, uh, the colors you like, you can even put certain effects in. But because this case is nice black and red, I'm going to stick to the red in here. So we got the bottom of the case and the fan all in red now. And then we'll play some Rocket League. Let me just turn down the volume a bit, because otherwise you will probably get deaf. 50 should be okay. Oh, caps off. So we can take the screwdrivers to the side. Uh, get them on Tillman. Uh, oh, was it, or is it only the M.2 SD? Yes, for now we're only running an M.2 SSD. It's at, located at the back of the motherboard, but if you want, behind the motherboard tray, there is space for two 2.5 inch drives. So you can put either an SSD or a 2.5 inch hard drive there, if you want. And what's also interesting about this motherboard, it supports Store MI technology. So if you're using a hard drive, you can uh, accelerate your hard drive uh, by using the SSD. So if you, you set them up to work together, it will automatically uh, uh, gather information about the most used uh, programs on your computer or computer games, or and it will automatically move them to the SSD because it's faster and the data that you don't need the speed for will be moved to the hard drive. So you have a lot of storage, which is, which is a lot more affordable on a hard drive. Can I have a question? Could you show us the build with a detailed cam? Yes, I can. I don't know if you can see it like this. I will take the side off real quick. There it is. I can just leave it open for a while so we can see it better also in the bigger cam.
There is Rocket League. Let me just plug in my headset. And let's make sure you still get sound. It's indeed a headphone and a mic. That's still right. There's some Rocket League. There's different game modes in Rocket League. So I'm open for everything. Just drop in chat whatever you like best. So we've got standard, we got doubles, dual, chaos, drop shot, which is a very interesting play mode where you have to destroy the ground and drop the ball in there. Rumble, which is like, it's a bit like Mario Kart. You get items and you can, can fire them to your opponents or you can kick away the ball. Got snow day, which is like, like ice hockey, hoops, like basketball and rocket labs, I think. It's experimental maps. So if you have any preference, just drop it in chat. I already have a nice watermelon car, I see. Should be fine. For now, I'll just do standard. If you want me to swap to another game mode after this, just let me know what you like best. We got dropped in the middle of a game. We're already 2 0 behind. Okay, let's see if we can make that up. So at the moment, even though we're gaming, the system is still very silent. I already get some suggestions. Hoops, yes, yeah, sure. We, we'll just play some hoops afterwards. That's already one back. 265, I think gigabyte is fine for an operating system and perhaps a game or two. Another 512 up to one terabyte SSD would be good. Yes, that's definitely true. If you're using only an SSD, then 265, it's indeed, it's, it's not that much. So you probably want to use a hard drive with there for your personal files and pictures and movies and but if you only want to use an SSD, I would definitely suggest using 512 gigs or higher. When is the RX 580 Mac 2 available globally? I'm not sure about that one. That really depends on a region. So I'm not sure for each, each region when it will be available. So I'm sorry, but I cannot answer that question, unfortunately. Come on, teammate. Score. So at the moment, I'm playing in, uh, in full HD. And unfortunately, the capture card doesn't support higher than 60 FPS. So that's a pity, because the monitor I'm using... Uh, it's a, a quad HD monitor actually, um, up to 144 hertz. So once it's not hooked to the to the capture card, it's a really nice gaming experience. And of course, as I said before, it supports AMD uh, FreeSync technology. So in combination with this graphics card, you also have the synchronization. So what FreeSync essentially does is it matches the, the hertz on your monitor with the frame rate you get in the game. So you get a more fluent experience. So for example, if you have a 144 hertz monitor, but you, your uh, graphics card is only able to uh, render 100 frames per second, for example, your monitor will switch automatically to 100 hertz. And it will do that on the fly. So as it hires or drops, it will automatically adjust like your frame rate does. Now the SSD prices are dropping too. Yeah, definitely. SSD prices were a lot higher a couple of months ago. And I think the, the RAM prices are also dropping a bit. Not as much yet. So uh, DDR4 memory is still quite expensive. Was a lot cheaper in the past. 
but I think it's also getting a bit better. Move out of the way, oops. I scored on myself. That one was successful. Tried to block him, but I was too late. <laughs> I demoed an opponent and right away I got revenge. Oops. So I got demoed. A Rocket League is I think it's a really nice game. It's so easy, but still it's such a complicated game if you want to play it on a higher level. So it's really an easy to learn hard to master game, which I really like. Like everyone can step in there, it's so easy to explain. It's just you have a ball, make sure to drive it in the opponent's goal. That's pretty much it. But to become really good, it's so hard. Yeah, Cybershark, it was a lot cheaper, the DDR4 RAM. It got way more expensive, but now it's getting a little bit cheaper again. So for this build, we're using 16 gigs of memory, but if the prices are a bit lower, you can also consider taking 34 gigabytes of RAM, which can also be really interesting if you want to do multiple things at the same time, like gaming and streaming. Let's get that baby in there. How many frames per second are you getting? And what are the temp temperature stats with that small case? I, at the moment, I don't have any program installed to uh, measure the temperature. But in next game, I will try to see if I can put in the frame counter at Steam. So you can see how many frames I'm rendering. I'm at least... Now it's playing at 60 hertz because of the capture card, but there is no problem in playing this at uh, quad HD at high settings. You can easily run this game at 144 frames per second. That's no problem at all. Rocket League is not a very demanding game, so it will run on quite a basic PC. But of course that gets a lot different if you also want to stream at the same time. Then it gets a lot more demanding. Nice one, teammate. Just destroy him. If you can't hit the ball, hit the player. Oh, you got that. Twenty-six seconds. We can still win this without overtime. Missed there. Why is RAM so expensive? That's the market. If there is a lot of demand and not as much supply, the prices will rise. And there was a lot of demand lately. Also, the mobile market is also requesting quite a lot of flash memory. And that's the same type of memory that's also used for SSD, SSDs and, and RAM. So if uh, the manufacturers can only uh, supply a certain amount of flash memory and if there is a lot of demand from the mobile market, for example, because of new smartphones, uh, you can sometimes also see that in the prices for SSDs or RAM. How, Yusef's asking, how many hours do you have on this game? Whew, that's a good question. I don't know actually, but I think it's, it's quite a lot. It's one of my favorite games, so I think it will be like six or seven hundred hours, maybe? I 
I was supposed to play hoops. Let me just leave this real quick. Because we got a request to play some hoops. Actually a really fun game mode. It's so different from the normal Rocket League. Hoops is really hard if you're not very good at doing aerials. And it's a really complicated game. Oh, we're already in an existing game. Okay, still nil nil. I think hoops is quite hard compared to the regular game mode. I'm not very good at this. But it's a lot of fun nonetheless. We almost score on himself. No, not enough power. I wasn't paying attention, I was reading chat and then I was a bit... <laughs> I was not sure where I was and I actually almost hit it towards my own goal. But we scored. Well, my teammate scored. Okay, teammate, take the kickoff. The kickoff in hoops is super important. You can score right away in the air there. So if your kickoff is too slow, there is a high risk of your opponent scoring on you. That's in there. Cybershark says, pre-builds are always more expensive than if you build it on your own. That's a bit depending on the market as well. Because as you may have noticed, graphics cards were quite expensive in the past year because of the mining hype. And the prices of graphics cards individually were way more effective than of complete systems. Oh, that's the wrong side, teammate. Nope. Ah, uh, missed it. Should have had that one. That one's broken. For the ones that tune in later, maybe we can just take a look at the specs of the PC we just built again. So the system we just built is running on an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 processor, which is a 6-core processor with simultaneous multi-threading. So it has 12 threads, so it's very good at multitasking, even though it's very affordable, it's a very powerful processor. So we put it on a mini ITX motherboard, the B450i Gaming Plus AC. And the AC stands for the, the wireless connectivity that it also provides. But now we're running it on the Gigabit LAN. Um, we combine it with 16 gigs of uh, HyperX Fury RAM, DDR4, um, and a 265 gigabyte Samsung 9, 
uh, 50 Pro SSD. There we go. <laughs> Jose Antonio said, snap, MSI score. Yes, yeah, sometimes I score, not always. Oh, I got an elephant. I need that elephant on my car. Let's play some Rumble. I think Rumble is a really cool game mode. That's like what I explained about the Mario Kart kind of thing, where you have items that you can fire towards each other. So because we're playing Rocket League, I'm playing with the game controller, it's the MSI Force GC30. It's a wireless version. We also have a wired one, the GC20. They're really nice controllers, I think. Um, you can also use them for your mobile phone. If you want to play your mobile phone, for example, there is an uh, OTG cable in the box. So you can connect them using the OTG cable to your, uh, to your mobile phone. So you can also play mobile games with this controller. There we go. Oh, only one minute left in this game. And we're already 2-0 behind. <laughs> Spoofest, the smell of chicken dinner is spreading, Mike, keep it up. Rocket League doesn't provide chicken dinner, unfortunately. But I also like PUBG. But let's see if we can still win this. There we go. I got the spikes a little bit too late. It's always nice to score with the spikes, they're so strong. Maybe we can have a detailed look at the system right now while running the games. Do you have the close-up cam for me? Let's see how I can drag this in. Right there. It's still running pretty silent, even though we're playing a game right now. So for this build, we're using the, the regular 2600 Ryzen 5 CPU, not the 2600X. Uh, that's because of the TDP of the 2600 is only 65 watts, so it's very suitable for a small system like this. Um, you can also uh, run a higher tier CPU, but you probably will need some to make sure at least that you have sufficient cooling for it. Because cooling is a lot more complicated in smaller cases. But for example, if you're going to use uh, an all-in-one water cooler or something, you, oh damn, it scored on us in the last second. You can, uh, you can also use a higher TDP CPU. The power delivery on a motherboard is strong enough to do that, but make sure your cooling is also sufficient to do so. Are any of you guys in chat, do you also play Rocket League? Or what kind of games do you play? What do you prefer? You got the spikes. You got the spikes. Ah, uh, they destroyed me. We failed. So close to winning. So Rocket League, I think it's a lot easier to play with with a game controller than with keyboard and mouse. Some people are actually pretty good with keyboard and mouse, but I tried it myself and I think it's it's super hard. For me, it's impossible to have control in the air with keyboard and mouse. See if the rest also readies up. Oops. That's a rumble in the game controller. <laughs> it's quite strong. Pla 
Platinum says play PUBG and Fortnite if you want subscribers and watchers. We actually do, uh, in the previous streams, we already did play PUBG and, and Fortnite, both of them. But I think it's nice to, to try different games once in a while. I think the Battle Royale game modes are really big nowadays. But that also means a lot of channels are only broadcasting PUBG and Fortnite. So I think once in a while it's nice to play another genre of games. And not everyone is into the, into the Battle Royale. Oh, teammate is AFK. Oh, we can still do this, I think. Okay, we got a nice magnet. Got it! People are asking how about performance, Afterburner. Uh, after this game I will try to install Afterburner so we can take a look at the temperatures for example. And also uh, have the frame counter in there. No. Oh that's cool, he got the fruit splash. Nice. That in there? Nice. So if you have any questions about the system or the second generation Ryzen platform, just let me know. Maybe about the monitor. Oh, so close to scoring. And he blocked it. Got it. Factum is asking Gamer CSGO or Warface? What do you mean with that question? I think we are... Do you mean Warframe? But if you're asking which one I prefer... Personally, I like first-person shooters a little bit more than the Warframe kind of games. So I would definitely choose CSGO over Warframe. Platinum, yeah, me too. I love to change, but all people want those two games. Yeah, it's the the battle royale thing, Fortnite and PUBG. It's it's a real big hype now. So many people are playing it, streaming it. So if you're not into battle royale, it's a bad time at the moment because it's quite hard to avoid. So Platinum, do you also play Rocket League or have you played have you played it before? Oh I was waiting for the pass. I had the plunger. Missed it. Let's 
see if we can put it in there. Yo! <laughs> nice one. Spoonfist, how well will this rig play Battlefield 5? I haven't taken a look at the minimum specifications for or the recommended specifications for Battlefield 5 yet, so I'm not sure. But I think with an RX 580 and a Ryzen 5 2600, you should be good to go. But it's also dependent on the resolution, of course. In 4K, it will be a lot harder than a full HD. We have this. Come here, nice. Uh, Nishant is asking about different kinds of memory. Um, yeah, it's the the brand is a bit dependent on on what you like and also what what is compatible with your motherboard. For example, if you want certain RGB effects, um, you might need to take memory from a certain manufacturer. But always make sure to check the the uh, the support list of your specific motherboard. So you're sure that the memory you're buying is compatible with the motherboard you bought. <laughs> Am I good? Yeah, in Rocket League? Have you seen RLCS? The pros, they're good. I'm not even remotely good compared to them. I don't know if you guys ever saw the flip reset. It's really cool. Like they hit the ball with all their four wheels and then they get to do another jump again. So if you repeat that again and again, you can just jump. In theory, you can just keep on jumping infinitely. But I don't even manage to do that once. Flip reset is really hard. I can do the basic aerials, but... Oh. Well, that went okay. Let's keep it in the air. No. Too bad. It's 8. I'm sure you have like 1k hours. No, I don't have 1000 hours yet. I think I'm not sure. But I think it's like it's around 700, I think. I don't know it exactly. But it's definitely not 1k hours. If you guys want me to switch game mode, just put it in chat. I'm down for any game mode in Rocket League. But in the meanwhile, we'll just install Afterburner. And see if we can get some frame rates. Displayed on screen, which can be interesting. Uh, let's see where do I have to download. Not combustor. Need to download link. I think 4.5 is the newest. 5, stable final. Got it. To extract it first, maybe. Yep. 
I should have extracted it first. Currently, I have G4560, B25, 250, GTX 1060, Vegas HyperX, Ristler or the kit of course, uh, Vengeance LPX. Um, so you mean you're, you bought more memory, higher capacity? Hello Sinrich, welcome. This is Rocket League actually. I'm just installing Afterburner right now so we can also see the, the frame rates and the temperatures. But we'll be right back into Rocket League. There we go. So at the moment it's idle of course, so the, the, fra the uh, clock speed automatically drops. The temperature is currently 54. So let's see if we can... Um, get the monitoring in game keep your graph I think it should be monitoring. Properly shown tray, on range. Okay. Let's see, I need to overlay. You want me to play ranked? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We can play some ranked. It's no problem. I'm up for it. Let me see how I get this on the screen. Should I try? That's obviously an option. I'll make this a bit. Let me see. Because here we have a frame counter as well. At least we should have. Uh, interface. That was that frame counter. Now we'll steam overlay. If yeah, bottom left should be, or let's take bottom right, or top right, it's easier. Ah, uh, it doesn't work until we restart. Then we'll just stick to this. Let's play some ranked. Oh, control was switched off. What kind of ranked? I can just do standard, I can also do one versus one. <laughs> that rigs need some <laughs> some RGB. It's kind of dark in here. It actually has a lot of RGB, but I put it to red to match it to the to the motherboard and the graphics card. Let's play some one v one ranked. Let's see if we can win some. Initial is asking about 8 gigabits 
8 gigabytes kit, of course, are vanishes. So should I sell off my single 8 gigabyte model of DDR4 or keep using it with dual channel? Um, that's a bit uh, dependent on what you want. If you use a lot of memory, definitely leave it in there. But it would be best uh, if you use models from the same size that have the same settings. Because in your settings, for example, you have uh, extreme memory profile. That will automatically put the right speed and timings in your memory. But if you're using different models, it can be that one uh, one of the models has to uh, run on lower speed or lower timings than it actually can. So you might slow down one piece of memory because you're using it in combination with a, lo uh, a slower one. Uh, my opponent is AFK. That's a bit boring. Hi Alex, welcome. We just built uh, a mini I I'm going to leave this first because he isn't playing anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's find a new match. Um we just built a mini ITX gaming and streaming system with a B450i Gaming Plus AC motherboard and a Ryzen 2600 uh, CPU. Uh, we're running an RX 580 graphics card in there. Uh, and now we're using it to play some Rocket League. Got a nice Force GC30 wireless controller. And uh, I'm open for any game type, so if you have a certain favorite game type, just let me know and we'll play it. Now we're doing 1v1 ranked. And see if I can win any. Don't laugh if I lose. Just missed that. Free win. Yeah, my opponent wasn't playing, so I thought I'd just leave. He got a free win of that. <laughs> but it's okay. There we go. So the good thing is that nowadays you can stream and game on a quite an affordable system. Before, you almost needed a separate computer to do gaming and streaming at the same time if you wanted to stream in proper quality. Nowadays, the uh, CPUs with a high core count, they're not as expensive anymore. So for a decent price, oh, he gave up. For a decent price, you can build quite a good system that can handle both streaming and gaming simultaneously. Let's play some more 1v1. It's quite fun. But I'm still unranked, so I think it has a hard time matching me to opponents. Level wise. But I think it will automatically get a bit harder as long as we play. <laughs> Thank you, Nashan. I appreciate that you like, you think that I play good, but really, compared to the pros, I'm nothing. I think I'm a decent casual, if I can call it like that. Playing against Desmond.
Hey Desmond, what are you doing? Going to pass it in front of your own goal? <laughs> Free goal, okay. <laughs> I see there is a difference in some people like Rocket League, some people don't. Yeah, it's all dependent on taste, like with everything. Some people like shooter games, some like soccer games, some like a lot like the Battle Royale nowadays. But we also did a couple of streams about that. I think they're also quite fun. I'm more of a PUBG guy than a Fortnite guy. I'm not really into the, the building thing in Fortnite. But don't worry, we'll surely have another Battle Royale stream again in the future. That's one thing I know for sure. Bye bingo. You play two hours per day, Nishan. Do you also play ranked? Because if you play two hours a day, every day, then I think you can get quite good in a while. Where did my opponent go? <laughs> Just fiddling around with bingo a bit. <laughs> Can you play Assassin's Creed? I don't have that at the moment here, but it's a good suggestion. We might play that in a future stream. Oops, is that going in? Hey bingo, go for it. Call of Duty, Battlefield, CSGO, Tomb Raider series are my kind of games. Yeah, I, in the past I played quite a lot of Call of Duty. I really liked the, the first and second one, the second World 1 versions. Uh, I also played some Modern Warfare, the first one. But I haven't really played the recent Call of Duty games. Are they any good nowadays? Tomb Raider, it's also quite a cool game, so many different versions of it. Nope, missed
Yeah, World War II is graphically it's good, but storyline motivating. Yeah, I really like the the World War II Call of Duty games. I think yeah, Modern Warfare. As I only played the first one, I thought it was it was okay, but it was not as good as the World War II. I just preferred the whole World War II setting was quite cool in Call of Duty. Oops, I didn't pay attention. Oh, 7-1. That's Brazil. The ones who play Rocket League or watch the FIFA World Cup. Not the last one, but the one before. They will definitely know Brazil. I'm sorry about you Brazilians out there. <laughs> I can already see some Brazilian chat, nice. <laughs> 7-1 is the most satisfying score in Rocket League, oh shit. Should have had that. That's a free goal. I have Assassin's Creed Origins installed. I didn't even know that, but I still don't have the, the login for the game launcher. So I still won't be able to play it, unfortunately. But today we're just going to stick with Rocket League and maybe in future streams we can definitely cover Assassin's Creed, no problem. We like to do all kinds of different games and... Oh, oh he didn't do anything. Tanachan, have you played ranked in Rocket League? Or do you only play the casual game type? And now I don't have any boost, but he missed. Lucky. <laughs> you have been spared. Thanks, Savage. <laughs> but we will definitely look into Assassin's Creed. That might be a good idea for a future stream. Very different kind of game, but definitely, definitely interesting. Do you play Assassin's Creed yourself? was quite a lucky goal actually. I didn't intend to shoot it at the goal yet. What other games do you have at the moment? I only prepared for this one. So for today we're just going to stick with Rocket League. But we can arrange anything. If you have suggestions for, for games for future streams, just let me know and we'll try to arrange them. We're always open for suggestions if you like certain games, certain types. 
we like to do a lot of different things so just drop it in chat and we'll definitely consider it it's getting a bit painful for bingo 16 to 2 I should have had that. Ah, oh, bingo. Betrayer. That was a good one, actually. Bingo is fighting back. No, don't know. You see, I'm planning on build a, uh, to build it this week. That's the reason I asked you on the Mac. Two is coming out globally. Uh, cool that you're building a PC this week. Unfortunately, I, I cannot help you with the uh, availability in different countries, as it really differs per country, country, and I don't know per country what the availability is at the moment. So, what are you planning for uh, to buy? In motherboard, CPU, memory. <laughs> Hello, Jeff from New York. Welcome. Uh, what accent is that? I'm from the Netherlands, so it's a Dutch accent. Oh, we can play with some more players. Let's play some rank 3v3. I love games that have a good storyline and great campaign. Yeah, those can be fun. It really gives you like... It's a bit like playing a movie. I personally, I'm really a multiplayer guy. I play a lot of multiplayer games with friends. But sometimes I also enjoy playing a single player match. Not too often. I prefer multiplayer personally. Jim Hansen, are you going to overclock the Ryzen 5 2600? Not today, maybe in the in the future I will. But for today, we just build a stock PC without any overclock. If we would do overclocking, uh, we would obviously need to uh, use bigger cooling. Now we're using the standard cooling for this processor, which is plenty sufficient for standard configuration, but for overclocking, we would need to use better cooling. <laughs> it got bumped everywhere. I'm looking for a console sized case. Any recommendations? The case we're using today, it's really compact, really cool. It's the Inwin A1. It's a bit different shape than a console. But it's definitely a small PC. And it still gives you a lot of opportunity to use big graphics card, big graphics cards. And, and you, it already comes with a power supply, 600 watts, which is sufficient for by far most uh, ITS configuration. Ryzen 5 2600, B450 Game Pro Carbon AC, RX 580, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 650 watt 80 plus bronze PCU. It's actually in performance quite similar to what we're running today. So, also 2600 Game Pro Carbon AC, so we're going for an ATX build. It's also really nice.
Can you play private, private matches? Actually, I think we can. After this one, I'll try to figure out how I can host a private match. Then we'll just make an MSI Rocket League server, no problem. What game mode do you want me to choose in a private match? Thank you, teammate. Losing this one quite badly. 3 0 behind. We were doing so good before. one moonball or something what is moonball is that a custom game mode i know rocket league has a lot of customization options in private match matches but i haven't played all of them We can play Rumble if you like. I think that's yeah, it's my personal favorite. I really like Rumble. Oh, the goalie was on his position. Score! Do it, teammate! Come on! <laughs> Took a while, but we scored. That was actually a pretty sweet goal, wasn't it? I'm surprised by myself. Okay, Tobias. 55 more seconds and now we'll start a private match. Actually, still win this. Oh, I should have hit that better. Uh, okay, we're still alive. Come on, teammate, score. This is getting close. No! No! 
Should have scored that one earlier. Wasted this game. I want to join you guys, but sadly I'm at work, maybe another day. You picked the wrong job, Jeff. I'm also at work. Let's do some privates. Let's see how that works. Uh, play private match. Create private match. I'll put it to... I can just make it 4v4 and I think you can also start even if it's 1v1 for example. Let's do Rumble. Default. Team settings. Let's make that blue. Main password party on. Okay, so if we use... Let's make it MSI. Password MSI. Let's make it all small letters. Create match. So server name MSI password MSI. Then you should be able to join. Hey Eric, of course I can win, but it's easier to win against you. <laughs> oh, you're a master, let's see. One v one rumble looks interesting. Come here, ball. If there's more people that want to join, just go to private matches, server name, MSI, password, MSI. And you should be able to hop in there. is a lot better than the public matches. Oh, I hope you would pass it for me. The good thing about Rocket League is that it's not very easy to stream snipe. <laughs> Tried to get to the side, <laughs> didn't work. Those spikes are so strong, especially in 1v1. That was a good shot.
Oh. That didn't work out. It's a good shot. Nice magnet control, nice magnet control. Still 241. We can still win this. Maybe. Nice one, good flick. Yeah, T Flash, you played this game before. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> was a bit lucky there. Oh, I missed it. Should have had that one. Three, three, we'll have a chance again. Hi Gary, welcome. So you built a PC by playing Rocket League? No, we first built a PC and then we played Rocket League. That'll be interesting, building a PC by playing Rocket League. I forgot to take the boost. Ooh. Oh, T-Flex, you're doing pretty good, I think. Giving me quite a hard time here. <laughs> but of course you have to let me win, because otherwise you will embarrass me in public. was a strong shot. Sorry about that. Oh, it's a bit too fast. That worked. A bit lucky, but it worked. <laughs> Thanks, T-Flex. asking what are the specs of the build right now in the screen the case is the inwin a1 mini itx case in there we got the uh, b450i gaming plus ac mini itx motherboard and we put a ryzen 5 2600 cpu on there it's the second generation amd ryzen processor with six cores 12 threads so it's really suitable for doing multiple things at the same time. Oops, missed that. Um, we got 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, HyperX Fury, and a Samsung 950 Pro M.2 SSD. And at the moment we're playing Rocket League with the Force GC30 game controller. It's a wireless version. Uh, on the... Uh, MPG uh, 27 CQ monitor, which is uh, a quad HD uh, monitor, so 2560 times 1440 pixels.
but because of the capture card, unfortunately, we're currently playing in full HD. Good game, T-Flex. Was a lot of fun. I love my Ryzen 7 2700X. I can imagine. That's a nice CPU, Gary. So we're going to wrap the... Uh, okay, one more match, T-Flex. And then we're going to wrap it up for today. So your chance for revenge. It will be lame to play a game, win, and then leave. And not allow you to take revenge. Oops. <laughs> I almost missed that one, actually. I drove a little bit too fast underneath. <laughs> Good block. Oh, I got hit. <laughs> I was really lucky to get that item at that point. <laughs> Too late. No! <laughs> I actually passed that. With an RX 580, this game easily stays above 60 FPS at max settings. Yeah, easily. That even would be a problem at higher, uh, higher hertz or higher resolution. Rocket League is not a very demanding game. But of course, things get a little different once you stream at the same time. Oh, it's a good challenge. <laughs> Cheeky, uh, sorry T-Flex. I had the plunger. <laughs> Another cheeky one. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Can you play We Happy Few in the next live stream? I, I don't know that game, but I'll take a look into it. I never heard of it. What kind of game is it, uh, Severage? <laughs> Counter plunge. No, I'm out of boost. <laughs> My idea was a little bit better than execution. No. Ah, nice one. Tried to drag it out again, but they don't work.
No. I shouldn't go for that kickoff. That's a better kickoff. How do you like my Pink Panther banner? No, I missed it. That was a pity. <laughs> I should have had that. It's a survival game. It released recently on the 10th of August. Okay. Interesting. I haven't played it before. Oh, uh, again the spikes. I hate those spikes. I haven't had the spikes this game. Unlucky. The spikes are so hard to get. <laughs> Am I scoring this? No, I'm missing this. And I'm missing again. Uh, I'm wasting my own chances. Patrick says, I got that monitor but haven't unboxed it yet because my PC build isn't done yet. Unboxing is always the best part. It's so nice to unbox new products. That was a good shot. When's the new Rocket League update, by the way? I don't know. What kind of update do they have planned? Will it add new in-game features, new play modes? This time I was awake. That was a good revenge reflex. Okay, let's wrap things up. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's stream. I had a lot of fun uh, building this very small but very powerful PC. Play some Rocket League on it, chat with all of you guys. Um, for the, the streaming, we have a very interesting campaign running at the moment. As you can see right above me there. Um, definitely visit our website, take a look at the page. We got nice suggestions for if you want to build a system for gaming and streaming. Uh, definitely check it out, got some nice tips if you want to do those uh, things simultaneously. Uh, for next week, it's still a surprise what we're going to do. We have a lot of things still under NDA, so we cannot announce everything yet. 
but it will definitely be an interesting stream. I can promise you that. So I hope to see you next week, same time again. And uh, see you then. Goodbye.